creating a video can be difficult, especially if you're not a video editor. There's so much to learn from choosing the right software, to editing your footage, to adding music and effects. And if you want to create a professional looking video, it can be even more time consuming and expensive. Kyber AI. It's a powerful video app that uses AI to make incredible videos from text prompts. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use Kyber AI to create your own amazing videos. We'll cover everything from choosing a text prompt to adding music and effects to make stunning animations and videos like this. Let's get started. First of all, we need to get access of Kyber. Let's go to Kyber. AI, I'll put the link in the video description below as well, and then you could press start a free trial. Sure, go ahead and sign up for an account. It's a credit-based system, but you need to subscribe. Right now, they offer a seven-day free trial, but after that, they'll charge you. I think their plans start at $5 a month. Once you sign up, just click create a video. On this page, you'll see your credits. The number of credits depends on your plan. Every time you make a video, it uses up your credits. I wanna mention this, so you don't use all your credits too fast. How many credits you use depends on how long the video is. Now on this page, you'll see four options in four different boxes. The first one is for uploading an image, which the tool will use as a starting point to create a video. The second option is for changing an existing video, basically making it look different. You can turn videos of yourself into cool animations. I'll show you how to do this later. This is a really powerful way to make videos. You can also create music videos using these special AI animations with a song or audio as a starting point. But the most common and easiest way to begin is by typing a text prompt. Just click here and you'll have a few options. When you start, you'll see the first page. The prompt section has two parts. The top part is for describing what you want to see. It's called describe the subject. Then there's another box for the style. What's great is that the subject box offers ideas. For instance, if you want to see something like a futuristic cyberpunk theme, you can find suggestions there. In the style part, you have lots of choices. There are different styles like cinematic, photorealistic, 3D rendering, and more. You can see a little preview for some of them. I usually begin with cinematic or photorealistic because they make the video look like it was taken with a film camera, vintage, or like a masterpiece. These styles use different words to describe how the video will look. If I choose photorealistic, it will make the video look quite different. This is a handy feature. You can begin by describing the subject and style you want to see. Kyber also provides a guide to help you type in these prompts. Here are the five things to add. Subject what you want to see, like futuristic cyberpunk in this case and preposition details for any extra information. For instance, if you want to include a spaceship in the distance, that's an extra detail you can mention. The setting, which is futuristic in this case, is already there. You should also consider adding what they call meta modifiers and styling options. Combining elements from all these categories will give you the best results. This is the first page I wanted to show you, and now we'll move on to the next one. Now we're on the second page called Video Settings. The first page was about deciding how our video's starting image should look. This page helps us set up the video itself. You can choose the video's duration, which can go up to a whole minute, a really handy option. The default is eight seconds, but I'm going to set it to six seconds to save credits. You can also pick the aspect ratio, which is useful if you're planning to make videos for platforms like TikTok with vertical framing. You can also choose the aspect ratio for your video for platforms like TikTok, Instagram Reels, or YouTube. 16 multiply nine is good for a regular movie like video. Wait before we move on to the next part. I wanted to ask for a quick favor. If you're enjoying the video so far, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out a lot and allows me to create more content like this. Now let's talk about camera movements. This decides how the camera moves in the video. If you pick none, the camera won't move at all. But I like options like zoom in or zoom out, so I'm going with zoom out in this case. This setting can really change how your video looks. You can set the number from 1 to 10 and higher numbers make a bigger difference. You can set the camera movement from one to 10. When you set it close to 10, the image will change a lot and look quite dynamic. But if you choose one or two, it won't move much. You can even start in the middle and see what you get. Then you can generate another version if you want it to change more or less. For a music video, I like it around seven or eight, but for other purposes, I might choose differently. If I'm working on a regular or animation project and want minimal camera movement, I'd set it closer to one. There's also an option called Boomerang, which plays the video and then reverses it. 
I don't have it turned on right now, but you can choose to use it or not. It says I'll use six credits for this clip. I'm going to preview it. And don't worry, I'm not getting charged for anything yet. No credits are being used in the preview stage. I have 100 credits, and they won't be used until I'm ready to create the video. Now, in a few seconds, I should see four different frames. If I click on these frames, one of them will become the starting point for my video. Each frame is unique, and some may have people, while others don't. I think this one looks cool, so I'll start with it. I'm gonna click on this frame to see what it looks like. On this side, you'll see all your settings like a summary of your prompt style, duration, size, and camera movement. Here, you'll see the frame that will begin the video when I create it. But before I do that, let me show you one more thing. You also have the option to go back to the initial prompt page using the storyboard feature. The storyboard feature lets you create a different scene. You can start with one shot and describe a second one. For example, you could begin with a shot of a spaceship and then describe a soldier walking out. You can keep everything else the same and then go to the video settings. This time, you might choose a rotate clockwise scene, but leave everything else as it is and then preview it. This way, you can create different scenes in your video. You can build an entire story. Shot by shot, every time you create a storyboard, it makes one shot and you can think about the shot that should come next. This one starts with a close-up of the spaceship, but let me go back to the first storyboard. Once you've set up everything, you can simply click Generate Video or Create Video here. So you're making both storyboards to piece your story together. I have Storyboard 1 and Storyboard 2 ready. Creating these storyboards can be a bit time-consuming, sometimes taking up to 10 minutes. Based on my previous attempts, once they're ready, I'll show you the actual output. At the end, I'll also demonstrate how to upload an existing video and turn it into a compelling animation. Now, let me switch to full screen mode to show you what this looks like. Here, you can see the zoom effect. There's a zoom out effect happening, and it slowly transitions to my second clip. In this clip, it zooms in on the bottom of the spaceship. It's a 12 second clip that I made, and I used a setting close to one or two, so there's not much movement in the frame, except for the moment when it pivots towards the bottom of the spaceship in my second shot. This makes it look really impressive. You can create many shots with the storyboard option to tell a story and make a video that's one minute or even longer. Once you're satisfied, you can click share, which creates a link. You can copy it or email it, but I usually prefer to click download and save it to my computer. The quality might be a bit lower, not full HD, but it still looks good. If you want higher quality, you can upgrade to 4K or 1080p videos, and those options are available too. Please note that these higher quality options require a more advanced plan than the one I currently have. If you click on the video tab, you'll see all the videos you've created and you can search for them. Now, let me click create a video again because I wanna show you something incredible. It's about transforming an existing video, which really amazed me. I have a video of a model running on a beach and it's about six seconds long. I'll open this video and place it here. I got this video from another platform where I have a subscription. I get all my images, photos, music, and more from there, and they're all copyright free. This platform has a huge collection with thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of different video files. I picked a video of someone running because I've realized that with these copyright free images, I can transform them into whatever I want. It's incredibly powerful. Now, I'll click continue to prompt. I'll get similar boxes as before. So I'm going to use something like futuristic cyberpunk without adding more detail. In the style, I can pick various styles, but I'll choose photorealistic here. You have the choice to change the style to something like 3D rendering or oil painting. Then, I'll go to video settings to make the transformation more stable. I'll keep it on the most stable setting. This way, the movement will look more realistic. Here, you won't find other settings like camera movements because those come from the video you uploaded. Now, I'll go to the preview frame again. This is a six second clip, because my original video is that length. Just make sure not to add something that's a minute long because it will use up a lot of your credits. So if you don't want to spend all your credits, avoid adding something that's a minute long. It will generate four different images again. Let me wait for this to finish. And here, I chose one of the frames. While that's going on, I'll go to my video tab and show you the version I did earlier. Look how good it looks. See this video I created with that model running on the beach with a cyberpunk style. This looks amazing. I also downloaded another clip from Pexels showing someone running. I transformed them into an photo realistic cyberpunk style. Let me show you. 
It's a 3D model of an cyberpunk style. This is the same video clip. And I achieved this style by simply dragging and dropping it into Kyber. It's truly impressive. That's all for today's tutorial. Thanks for watching this video on how to use Kyber IE. I hope you learned something new and are excited to start creating your own amazing videos with this powerful tool. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more great content. I'm always working on new videos to help you learn and grow, so you don't want to miss out. And if you have any ideas for future videos, please share them with me in the comments below. I love hearing from my viewers and learning what they want to see.